Hello everyone, I am Dale Ganey, sales engineer with Arcom Digital. In this video, we'd like to demonstrate for you the connection and operation of the CPD radar within the Arcom Quiver platform. If you are using the Hunter platform, you will need to set up your FSK frequencies. You will get an alarm that reads forward signal is absent. To set up your FSK frequencies, go back to the operational mode for CPD radar into settings, general, down to FSK frequency, remove any existing frequencies, add your set frequency, select the OK button, then the back button. Now you are ready for normal operation for CPD radar. The QAMP is a required part of the quiver operation. It will need to be powered on during CPD radar usage as shown in the following demonstration. This is the ARCOM QAMP which gives you 20 or 30 dB of gain in the return path. The amplifier has an RF input port and an RF output port. On the front panel one push button turns the amplifier on and off and also selects the gain. So if I press and hold the button for just a moment, you'll see that this LED turned on. This LED indicates the 20 dB gain position. And if I press the button one more time, it now changes LEDs and it means that it's in the 30 dB gain position. One thing ARCOM highly recommends is that you write the gain above the LED such as this is being 20, and there's 30 dB of gain. So now as you're changing the gain with the push button, you can easily tell which mode it's in. Now on the quiver, there are two ports. There's the forward port connecting to the forward path of your amplifier, and then the return port connecting to the return path of your amplifier. And you'll see that I have two different color cables on the two ports. This is so I can easily tell which cables are going to go what port. Yellow is forward, black is return. Your colors may vary, but have something that's different. Next, I'm going to turn the QAMP on. I'm going to press and hold. I know that my amplifier has 20 dB test points, so I'm going to set the amplifier in the 20 dB gain setting. And I'm going to start passive CPD radar. I'm going to select standard fixed 8 to 16 megahertz. And I'm going to go connect to my amplifier. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the forward and the return to the amplifier. And I'm going to connect the forward port of the quiver to the main forward output of the amplifier. And I'm going to connect the return input to, let's say, the auxiliary 2 port at first. So my yellow cable is my forward, and I'm going to connect that to the forward output, forward output of the main. And my black cable is my return, so I'm going to connect that to the return input of the auxiliary two output. And I will start the passive CPD radar, and I'm going to select standard fixed bandwidth 8 to 16 megahertz. And I'm going to turn my amplifier on. Right now the amplifier is off. Press and hold. Make sure that it is 20 dB, and it is. And I don't see any CPD. That's strange because the reports that I've been getting is uh, I have something on this leg. So right now my span is from 0 to 25 microseconds. Let's expand that, that span. 50 microseconds. Okay, there's CPD. It's running about minus 25. It's almost actionable. It is actionable. And it's about 15,000 feet away. Okay, let's go back to 25 microseconds. And let's check the auxiliary output one port. So I'm going to move my return input from auxiliary 2 to auxiliary 1. 
There's my return input for auxiliary one. Oh, here I've got two CPDs. Let's take a closer look at that CPD spike on the left. I'm going to change my delay scale to 5 microseconds. And there it is. Uh, I can zoom in on that. Sometimes uh, your CPD is very close to the edge here. I can zoom in on that by pressing zoom. It takes just a few moments for it to display. And there it is. So I see that there is something at uh, 428 feet away, 0.989 microseconds. There's also another spike down here. It's much lower. Uh, it's a little bit closer to me. So here you can see I'm in the high resolution mode. I need to go back to the standard mode. So that's five microseconds. Let's change our scale to 25 microseconds because I remember seeing two there. Yes. And let's, let's, I can see that my markers are bouncing back and forth between the two and that's because they're basically the same level as each other. So let's go into a manual marker mode. Uh, with the right and left arrow here I can manually change it. So here my marker is fixed on this peak at 23.102 microseconds and it's roughly 9,998 feet away, almost 10,000 feet away. So now that my markers are in manual mode I can use my left and right arrow to move the marker. So I'm going to press and hold, it's a long ways away. There it goes, it's about 20 microseconds, 15, 10, 5, and now I can press individually and put it on the top. There it is. It's at the peak of that CPD source, and that tells me that it is uh, 0.914 microseconds away, and it's 396 microseconds away. Good. So let's put this back into max mode. Okay, so now I want to check the amplifier main output. And I'm going to move the quiver return input cable from the auxiliary 2 port to the main output port. Okay, moving from auxiliary 1 return to main return. And you can see here that the noise floor is higher. So, and I really am unclear where the CPD is. I know that I am getting problems in this leg periodically. So let's uh, use some of the tools that the Quiver offers. The first tool I would use would be the band pass filter. And this would narrow the band pass filter if there are signals close to 12 megahertz. 12 megahertz is the frequency that we're very interested in looking at CPD. So I'm going to change the lower side of that bandpass filter from 8 megahertz to 11 megahertz and the upper side of that bandpass filter from 16 megahertz to 13 megahertz so that now takes from 8 to 16 megahertz and it's allowing me to see from 11 to 13 megahertz much narrower if there were signals occurring on the upper or lower side of that bandpass then it would be filtering it out in this case I still don't see any CPD uh, that tells me that it's not caused by signals that are very close to 12 megahertz. This is just broadband noise. So I'm going to return my bandpass filter. 8 megahertz on the low side, 16 megahertz on the high side, and I'm going to use the noise suppression feature. Select high. And now it is making several sweep passes starting to isolate the noise. You can see CPD is starting to emerge and here's my progress bar. And you can also see that I can stop the progress anytime I want. Now I want to note that once the progress bar is all the way to the right side, like right there, stop change to run. That means this is a frozen picture. Now it's not a very high CPD level. It is something that uh, may be popping up as the 
infrastructure changes. I'm just going to save that picture. Uh, do I want to save this file? Yes, I do. And let's run it again just to see if it's changed, and I, I doubt it has. Keep in mind that you always have to watch that QAMP. The QAMP can turn off automatically, unexpectedly, and you could be fooled as to what you're actually seeing. Okay, that progression is almost done. There it is. And still, 7.3 microseconds, 3,150 feet away. Okay, so now I've seen all three output ports and I'm going to return my noise suppression to standard so that I can continue on with my day and bear in mind that it is not sweeping. Uh, you need to select run to start it sweeping again. So I did save a response. Let's go take a quick look at it. I'm going to exit to the main menu and this time select the trace menu these are saved screenshots at particular operation modes. I saved in passive CPD return. And this is these are going to be numbers. So number 55 was the last one that I saved. And I'm going to see it by pressing enter. And there is my passive high noise suppression screenshot. All of your saved images are able to be extracted from your quiver by using the Q Browser software available for free download on our website at arcomdigital.com. For devices that do not have integrated test points, a mechanism is needed in order to provide a connection to the system for test and measurements. The Quiver Test Probe, or QTP20, is designed just for this task. The QTP20's 5 8 by 24 thread design attaches in place of the seizure screw port cover of your network device, and it probes the seizure screw for a precise measurement. The electrical performance of the QTP20 is intended to provide minimal network effect. The QTP has two F port outputs for convenience. Both ports are power blocking and are bi-directional. After your measurement is taken, the QTP20 is unscrewed and the port cover is simply reattached. Hello, my name is Rick Garth, Sales Engineer with Arcom. I'll be assisting you on how to navigate through our website to get to Sales Manager coverage area and contact information, and also Sales Engineer coverage map and contact information. First, open the web browser and enter in the URL arcomdigital.com. When you hit enter, you'll get to our home page. Click on Resources. This will take you to our Info Hub. The Info Hub includes various resources such as the ARCOM Library, ARCOM Academy, ARCOM uh, User Guides, and ARCOM's Install and Update. Next, at the bottom of the right of the web page, click on Service and Support. At the bottom of the page, you will notice you can click on Sales Territories and sales engineering territories. Sales territories will represent in color code the sales managers responsible for your coverage area, the sales managers that can assist with pricing of filters and ARCOM digital products. Next, you have ARCOM sales engineering territories. This will show ARCOM representatives for the coverage areas when you need assistance with training and technical support. 